for you. One basil. Friends, we're finally making some progress and I can't wait to tell you how things have been going. But let me tell you another thing. Unfortunately, not all updates are good and not all updates are bad. Some of them are that sweet middle spot. Let's get right into it. We have a lot to discuss. Come on. Okay, friends, the first thing you're gonna wonder is why is this video posted today instead of Tuesday? And that is because we have a special request put in by today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Lavoie. Lavoie was kind enough to send me their Core 400S air purifier. When it comes to working in a room full of animals, it's important to me for them and I to have good quality air. This device, this three-stage filtration system, first captures particles such as dust and lint. Then the air passes through the H13 filter that captures 99.97% of airborne particles. Lastly, the clean air moves through the activated carbon filter which removes odor, something one can face when keeping animals in their home. The device contains an Air Sight Plus laser sensor that detects the amount of particles present in one cubic meter of airspace. This is then conveniently displayed on the device's display screen. This air purifier can be synced up to the VSync app to control the device from your phone, which is a really cool feature. It'll give you air quality updates, let you set schedules for when you want the unit running, and a few other handy features that facilitate operating the device. You can learn more about the Lavoie 400S series air purifier and take advantage of the Amazon Prime sale by following the link in my description. Thank you so much again to Lavoie for sponsoring today's video. What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video on my channel. My name is Dion and you're watching Reptiliatus. Ah, where to begin? Today we are going to be doing that update that you guys have been asking for for quite some time. Please do an update on Basil. Basil, 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 Basil. Seriously though, and rightfully so, you guys have been asking me, where's Basil at? I mean, it's only fair. He's been missing from every feeding video for months. And I think at some point I hinted at some progress I was making with him. But then there's this period of time between April and now where a whole skew of things went very wrong. But thankfully, a whole skew of things also went right. You guys know how important community is to me. I emphasize it every single episode. Whether it's my question of the day, for today's question of the day, for today's question of the day for today's question of the day whether it's my effort to be as honest with you all as possible to maintain a certain level of transparency with you all so here i go where to start without risk of sounding like a complete idiot i have to share with you guys that basil went through some health issues now these weren't anything to do with let's say his immune system or you know falling sick it had to do with the shedding cycle. By now, most of you are well aware that Basil is a very shy tree monitor. Mr. Basil, as you can see, it's either this or him running around in there or completely going into the cork tube. And the funny thing is that personality, if anything, is sort of more in correlation with the natural disposition of these animals, whereas Sabzi, is kind of what you get on the opposite extreme when you put in tons of work and time and tame these animals and condition them to be very tolerant of human interaction. So Basil has been tricky to train and tame and a few months ago he went into a shedding cycle. Tricky thing is as soon as I come into the room most of the time Basil's hidden because he hears me come in and hides. That's how scared and shy he is and once in a while when I feed him and I'm lucky, I can see his whole body because usually he'll be basking and maybe show his upper body, torso, head and front arms, but he's quick to keep hidden and keep like half his body tucked away. And what ended up happening was he went into a shed cycle and I didn't realize for maybe three days that it wasn't coming off properly. And so a few of his toes became somewhat constricted of blood flow because the shedding didn't come off when it needed to and it got tight. 
What also didn't help in noticing the issue was that it was only the back feet that were having the constriction. The front legs had zero issues with shedding, so when half of his body was showing, I didn't realize that the back legs were having the issue. I happened to catch a glimpse of him against the wall in his enclosure one day, and I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. So I pulled him out, I didn't want to stress him, but I got him out and soaked him, and there's still a lot of like swelling in some of the toes. So I immediately contacted Dr. Brown and I felt so embarrassed about the situation because I was so happy with how he was doing. And you guys know that I moved him into Sabzi's enclosure, which she had been doing perfectly in. The humidity levels, everything was perfect. There is one observation I can make now in hindsight is that I don't believe Basil was using the birdhouse as the moist humidity hide. As you know, I have a birdhouse in the enclosure that's full of sphagnum moss that's moistened for the animals to sleep and rest in. These guys take lots of naps throughout the day and they usually do it in a moist hide. And I think that would have benefited him immensely in shedding properly. But I guess just due to his shy nature, he was always hiding in cork hollows and anyway, the long story short is that Basil had some serious shedding issues that led to me taking him to the vet. So Dr. Brown assessed him and found that the situation was a lot worse than when Sabzi was in for, to this day, we don't know what happened with her toes. It was really a mystery. The ironic thing is what we thought maybe happened to Sabzi was what in fact happened to Basil. Basil had a shedding issue that led to constriction of some of his digits and Sabzi's situation was not that. There was no stuck shedding, so we really don't know how that damage occurred. But alas, I digress as usual. Digressing is what I do, and I appreciate that 170,000 of you put up with it every day. We discussed it on the phone, and Dr. Brown recommended that I kind of go through the same procedure to treat it. The Silvazorb gel should be applied to all the digits every day, better yet, twice a day, for the next few weeks until all the shedding was off. And I've been doing this for a long time. And then he was also put on antibiotics, the septazidine injections every few days, the same way Sabzi was, to ensure that there was no infection caused by the inflammation in the toes. Okay guys, so I've just arrived at Campus Estates with Basil here. He's just right there. He's gonna be getting his second antibiotic shot now. Now, unfortunately, just those few days of constriction led to the nail beds of a few of the digits losing blood flow long enough for the nails to die. So he did end up losing a few nails, which really, really sucks. I would never want that to happen to any of my animals. And I also really wanted to let you guys know about this with the full scope of the treatment and the recovery and everything because I know that on this platform, a lot of you have a growing interest in keeping Varanus Prasinus, the green tree monitor, because of what you see on this channel. You see Sabzi, you see Basil, and you're really excited about these animals. You want your own. And the way I keep them on my channel has worked fairly well, but part of what I want to do during this video is emphasize the utmost importance in providing your tree monitors with several moist or humid hides, maybe even different kinds throughout the enclosure. And I also want to recommend that you consider housing green tree monitors in custom built Bavaria. Now it's not to say that you can't use commercially built enclosures like the ones you've seen me keeping my animals in, but I do want to say that holding in and maintaining the necessary humidity levels for these animals to thrive and shed properly will be a lot more challenging than if you were to have, say, what Brandon at Canadian Cold Bloods has set up which is essentially these closed off enclosures with just glass panes in the front and some floor vent inserts in the back for ventilation, you're going to not only hold in more heat for the animals, which they like, but also keep in that humidity because the whole top isn't screen. You don't have cross ventilation in the front panels and things like that. So please keep this in mind. I want you to learn from the mistake 
that I made, although I will say in my defense, and it was nice to hear from Dr. Brown too, that this sort of thing can happen very quickly and it's not really neglect. If that shed doesn't come off when it needs to, it very quickly can lead to the issues that Basil faced. So that's kind of what happened. I just wanted you guys to know that for the last few months, I haven't been showing him because I didn't want to stress him and because frankly speaking, he's still a scaredy cat and didn't want to show his face on camera. But the benefit or the happy update to give is that I've been persistently working through the training and taming process along this journey and he's come around so far and you're going to see at the end of this video the progress he has made and it's really quite something. Now, you guys know when it comes to training or taming my reptiles, I'm really particular about my approach. And I feel that it's always very important to let the animals make the move. You know, food is always the key to their heart, but I'm adamant about letting the animal decide when it's going to interact with me. So, in most cases, when I'm trying to tame my reptiles, I give them the decision and full control to decide whether to interact with me or not. I don't force them into handling. However, I have to make an observation known to you all, and it's that I really do feel that with the tree monitors, the forced handling that was needed to medicate them with the Silvazorb ointment definitely had to have played a role in sort of forcing them into a tame down process. Now we know that the medicating of the animals was necessary so there wasn't any way around that, but I did notice that as I did that every day because I had to, Basil was calming down over time and I also did the same thing with Sabzi. So there was a correlation between two animals and part of the step that led to them being tamed down. Now I'm not saying go in there and grab your tree monitor and force it into handling, but I just have to share that there might be something to that. There might be something to some minimal gentle handling and not on a daily or regular basis, but a little bit of force handling. Very calm and something that shows the animal that they're safe in those hands and it's not something to be worried about. You want every experience to be as positive as possible, but yeah, the, the force handling definitely did have some positive effect on Basil's training. I just have to make sure that that's known to you all. It's a very interesting observation and yeah, take it as you will, what you think, but it did happen. Alright friends, so for today's question of the day, I'd like to ask you all a pretty deep question. Now listen, I'm not asking you to confess your sins or anything like that to me here, but I'm just curious if you have any stories that you would feel comfortable sharing with our little community here of situations where, I'm not saying you shouldn't blame yourself, but you really felt like you were doing everything right with your pet, but something still went wrong and you had to correct the issue. Sometimes it's animal or, you know, individual specific. You know, you keep all your animals a certain way and one of them doesn't thrive in those conditions. That can happen. I'm very curious to know, and I'm sure others would be curious to know. And the best part is, Anyone reading the comments can engage and chat with each other and it can help everyone else avoid those issues or learn from the mistakes that you had to work through so that we can make sure that everybody's pets do better. So let me know in the comment section down below. As always, I'll give your comment a heart and hopefully we can engage in a little bit of a conversation. Awesome. I also want to take a very quick moment to thank my newest patron over on the Patreon platform. Thank you so much to Faraday. I really appreciate your support and viewership and your decision to make contributions to this channel on a monthly basis. You've unlocked a whole bunch of really cool perks and I can't wait to get to know you better on the platform. And if you want to learn about how you can support this channel for as little as $2 a month, you can check the link down below to my Patreon page to just get more information about it. Thanks for your consideration. So now what I really wanted to share with you is the exciting news. With Basil thriving again, his shedding issue being resolved, I wanted to show you the progress I've been making with him as far as his taming down goes. Here you can see him getting one of his frozen thawed pinky snacks, something I offer my tree monitors every few weeks or a few times a month. Since they're very young and growing, this type of fat just goes straight into getting bigger and is no issue for them. Remember that they are primarily insectivorous. 
Now, one of the strategies I've been using is actually fasting Basil maybe an extra day or two before feeding him. And then when I feed him, I offer him most of his food from tongs. So not only is the animal hungry and wants to take the food, it's going to help in desensitizing them from fearing you with the tongs. And as you can see, that's really working quite well. From there, the next thing I introduced was getting him to walk onto my hand. This is a huge step in getting your tree monitor used to you and not associating you with any form of danger. As you can see, he's inquisitively inspecting my hand. He's weary. If it were anywhere else in the enclosure, he'd have that cricket down his throat by now. But because it's on my hand, he does recognize the difference and is more cautious. Thankfully. He's really getting used to me as you can see. And we're just gonna keep doing this over and over and over like we did with Sabzi. And very quickly he will learn that, hey, that hand's a safe space. I can eat as many Jiminy's as I like on it. So friends, there you have it, a bit of a Basil update, and I hope you understand everything that happened, and I hope you can appreciate the learning experience to be had here. Thankfully, he's doing really well. As I said, he only lost a few toenails, and it's not going to impede his ability to climb at all, which is so great. And from what you can see here, he's really making large strides in his training. I'm so thrilled that he's this receptive to eating and I'm really hoping that the next time we do a feeding video, he'll be doing the same thing or even more. I just wanna say thank you so much for tuning into today's video. It means so much to me to have your support and viewership. You guys are amazing. And I look forward to seeing you all on Friday for our next video. Thank you so much for watching and take care.